everyone! Another uh, live stream from Feng Shui and Prosper. My name is Sabrina Kadri. Uh, in case I am new to you, I am the founder and principal consultant of Feng Shui and Prosper. And if you've stumbled upon this channel, if you're brand new, you are likely, um, you know, been a Feng Shui enthusiast. And this is what the channel covers. And every two weeks or so, I try to do a live stream with a specific topic um, and also take some amazing Q&A from you guys. And so if you haven't followed or liked or subscribed to my YouTube channel or my Facebook group, because we are now live in both platforms, please make sure that you subscribe or follow me so that you can watch my future uh, live streams. So today, we are talking about what I feel is a really important topic to clarify. Feng Shui versus Law of Attraction. Okay. Now, Feng Shui, most of you who are following my channel, you most likely know what Feng Shui is. But if you've stumbled upon this video and you don't know what it is, Feng Shui really is an ancient uh, Chinese metaphysical study of the space, of directions, of landform, and of time, okay? And through Feng Shui, uh, the three basic ingredients of having a compass reading, having a time factor, and looking at a, a layout of a home, for instance, a classically trained feng shui consultant will be able to calculate the energy of a space. Look at it as like a, like a metaphysical home inspector, right? A regular home inspector will come into the house and say, oh, the roof needs licking, uh, the, the roof is, is leaking and you need to patch it up, the foundation's cracking, whatever, but the kitchen, like the wiring is good. That's what a regular home inspector would do, right? A feng shui consultant goes in there into your home, but with a metaphysical uh, viewpoint. So we can go in, we do our calculation, and we can figure out where is the uh, area that's abundant for uh, prosperous, for money. Where, where are the areas that's great for career uh, progression? What about health? What about relationship? And we go in, we look at the metaphysical cracks in the foundation, so to speak, and we use the five elements, which are fire, earth, metal, water, wood, <laughs> and using the five elements to go into a space to remedy the negative and using the same five elements to activate the positive energy. That is feng shui. Law of attraction is another uh, spiritual metaphysical um, wisdom that basically there's law of attraction is 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 a big topic on its own just like feng shui but law of attraction in like if you were to explain it in a nutshell is another form of manipulating energy okay like attracts like so if you think positive or feel positive and you're feeling joyful and happy, no, no matter what life throws at you, or at least you're, you're, you have tools to get you into a more positive space of thinking and feeling, then with the idea of like attracts like, then when you're being positive, then more positive things come into your life. And vice versa, if you're feeling negative thoughts, if you're thinking negative, uh, you're feeling negative feelings and you're thinking negative thoughts and you you don't have the tools to kind of pull yourself out of that, then again, like attracts like, when you're in a negative space, negative space, then you're attracting more negative experiences into your life. Now, uh, most of you guys, who, who here has heard of um, this is when the term law of attraction, uh, the term law of attraction actually is not new in the world, but who of you here have watched The Secret? 
I think the movie The Secret that I think maybe came out a little after 2000, maybe 2001, 2002, that really made the idea of law of attraction blow up. In the, it was like a worldwide phenomenon, right? Put it on the comment, in the comment if you've watched The Secret. Uh, the Secret really is the first time, um, I mean, I've been in the self-development uh, path for a while now, since I was 15. My very first book when I was 15 was from uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he is, is a huge proponent of law of attraction, right? But the actual term of law of attraction, I've only really started getting more familiar since watching The Secret. And so The Secret is all about, um, or, or I should say law of attraction is about what is low vibration. So low vibration is uh, our emotions or thoughts that put you in a space of fear, frustration, uh, worry, anger. And high vibrational uh, thoughts or feelings would be joy and love and faith and optimism, right? So, which is why if you're in the law of attraction sphere, people will go like, you know, go high vibe or you're very low vibe or something like that. That's what they mean. It's the kind of energy that you put out. And so, um, the reason I wanted to do this topic is because fast food feng shui seems to have jumbled up the two. Okay. You got the unfortunate part is the English speaking world, uh, or basically anything that's out that's non Chinese speaking world, there aren't a lot of information that is real feng shui. Right. So uh, if you're not able to read Chinese, then a lot of the classical feng shui information uh, that's out there, we can't consume because we don't understand the language. Well, I do. I read and write Mandarin, but um, the feng shui texts are so cryptic <laughs> and very poetic in that it just it just F's up my mind. Like even though I, I, I can read and write in Chinese, it just I'm not going, I'm not even going to try to attempt it. So if you don't have your hand in um, Chinese, on Chinese feng shui books, a lot of the non Chinese information out there, I would say if I were to give a number, 95% of the feng shui information out there is what I call fast food feng shui. Okay. And most of them are fast food because they take the very basic formulas of feng shui, which makes it look like it's legit, right? They take the really basic, 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 most basic formulas of feng shui and put a twist into it. And most of them, especially the English books, most of them add law of attraction into their so-called feng shui books, um, feng shui um, articles that you see online, okay? And this is why, to be honest with you, myself and my other peers who are classically trained, uh, and I've mentioned this a couple of times in my other private live streams, it feels really um, frustrating because this 95% of this bad info, this fast food feng shui information drowns out information of classical feng shui that me and my peers are trying to push out into the world. So for instance, relationship, okay? Um, if, if you guys have questions whether something is feng shui or law of attraction, put it in the comment because I would love to clarify it for you. But the thing that is the most prevalent is, let's say, relationship, right? The fast food feng shui information will say, oh, if you want to attract a partner, you have to make sure that your bed has two bedside tables, that you have enough pillows for two people, that you have a painting of a pair of lovers, and that is how you feng shui your bedroom for a relationship. And I really should get a buzzer for that. It's wrong. That is not feng shui. That, it, however, is what I call law of attraction decorating, okay? If you want to activate relationships with feng shui, 
you can look at what are the directions specific to your home. So I can't go generalized here. It needs to be specific to your home. Find out where the most uh, prosperous energy is for relationship and you activate it with either of the five elements, right? Water, wood, fire, or uh, earth, metal. But to put uh, like the Mandarin ducks or to put a painting of a pair of lovers or to have two bedside tables, to have uh, roses, bouquets of roses, you know, in your house, that is law of attraction decorating because, and, and I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying it's not feng shui, okay? But what law of attraction decorating does is what does it do? It makes you feel good that you're surrounding yourself with things that remind you of your desire, your positive desire to attract a relationship. Okay? Do you guys get that? So in terms of relationship, if you're seeing, let's say you're, you're seeing that beautiful painting of, uh, of a couple that you love and you feel good and you can kind of visualize yourself Visualization, the power of the mind is really big in law of attraction. If you can visualize yourself just putting your face on the painting and maybe the painting of your future love, you know, your future one on that, and you can visualize and see that that is you, that is putting you in a high vibration, and that in turn helps you attract the relationship. Okay? And, uh, and uh, Alana is talking about a home office or home uh, because now with the pandemic, everyone's home, right? There, uh, you know, there are a lot of feng shui articles out there that says, oh, you know, if you, if you feel frustrated because you're cooped up and you, you know, you, you feel very uh, restricted because you're not able to go out of your home much and you put... Uh, paint, uh, postcards of the places that you want to visit when the pandemic is over or whatever, right? That is fine, but that's not feng shui. That is law of attraction decorating because that makes you feel less confined at home. That makes you feel like it, it gets you kind of daydreaming that you, you, um, and putting your desire out there that once the pandemic is a little bit more under control, that you're going to go uh, and visit all these other places in the world. With feng shui, if you want to activate uh, for traveling, for instance, uh, then you activate the sky horse, which in all honesty is not something that I do very often. But now that I mention it, maybe it's something that I could uh, add into uh, one of the modules um, that I teach, but that's uh, that's one thing that you can do. Or what about, let's say, career progression, right? Going back to the home office, career progression. If you want um, a, a promotion, for instance, right? The fast food function articles will have you put, um, let's say, what's a good object for let, let's say an affirmation, okay? Maybe you put a sticky note affirmation on your computer uh, on your computer screen and say, this time next year, I will be promoted to director or manager or, or anything like that, right? Um, the, so that's law of attraction decorating. Feng shui decorating is a little bit trickier because in order to really more powerfully tap into career progression or business uh, or business success, your work desk is really, really important. And in classical feng shui, again, this is very unique to your home. I can't give a generalized advice because unfortunately that is just how classical feng shui is, okay? It is very case by case. Um, then we look at where the work desk is located and where the work desk is facing. That's another other topic. I believe I did a video on that location versus direction. That is the classical feng shui method of tapping into career progression or business luck. 
okay you look at your bed you look at your stove you look at your work desk in terms of the location and the direction but if you don't have access to classical feng shui information and you still want to do something to help boost your career uh, your work area for instance either it for career or for business feel free to do your law of attraction decorating just don't confuse it with feng shui and don't let other books or articles confuse you and meld the two together okay um, and uh, any questions so far I'm not doing uh, astrological readings right now <laughs> again it is very if you want something in-depth um, Alana go seek a Chinese astrologer I highly recommend that um, and so what else uh, did I want to talk about uh, feng shui and law of attraction the main thing really is when you're reading an article and or a book some of these things are are in books right um, ask yourself is this something that's more something that just makes me feel good because I'm surrounding myself with items that make me feel good if that is the case it's very likely law of attraction decorating if if you see a book or an article that talks about tapping into energies that is based on the period of your home based on the direction of the compass for instance then that is more likely classical feng shui okay now I do have a way uh, that I do combine it together and um, it's a bit of putting dangling a carrot in front of you guys here but I am uh, opening my registration for manifesting code it is only open for those who join me in feng shui 2021 and I'll talk about it um, in, in, in another video but there is a way to combine feng shui with law of attraction so in manifesting code in December we're gonna do a master class on how we do the combination so in law of attraction for instance you guys have heard of vision board right a vision board is basically um, so for instance let's say you have a goal that is business related or financial money related okay um, so a vision board basically is you looking for pictures that would put you in a high vibration state relating to money if your vision board is about money okay so maybe you put your dream car or your dream house on a uh, on a board uh, or maybe your dream vacation and the kind of clothes that you wear whatever it is that makes you feel wealthy or affluent you put it on your vision board that's law of attraction decorating okay and it works I do on I I've done law of attraction for you know like as in like a daily practice I've done it for at least a decade now my daughter's yeah 15 15 16 years now as in like daily practice not like once in a while inconsistent um, you know um, mindset work right so you have your vision board now now we're gonna add in that feng shui layer in terms of feng shui where should I put this vision board where in my house again I don't do general feng shui because classical feng shui is not general okay in that master class in December I will talk about where in your house you can put your uh, your vision board or your other law of attraction decorating in terms of finances in terms of health in terms of relationship um, and and so on and so forth so then you're kind of looking at your home and at your layout to see okay where are based on feng shui the directions or the areas in my house that have this energy that I want to activate 
and where can I put my law of attraction decorating or vision board or whatever, whatever other stuff in that specific area. So then that's a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is kind of something that I've um, kind of just put together since like maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, I believe once a year uh, I do a master class on how to combine these two. But put that aside, this live stream is basically to help you clarify and also to, to put you on uh, alert so that every time you read through a lot of these articles that uh, tell you to put uh, all these pictures or uh, items that make you feel a certain way, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I love love law of attraction decorating. I'm gonna coin that, right? Um, but it's not feng shui. Don't forget to subscribe, like, or share this video if you found value in it. And if you are new in the feng shui journey, I would love to invite you to up uh, to join me in my free feng shui schools video series. I'm gonna share with you the one school of feng shui that absolutely everyone needs to stop doing because it really isn't how feng shui is meant to be done and i'll also be talking about different feng shui schools or feng shui methods that would suit other situations so the link to the video series would be popping up somewhere on the screen or under the video and i hope to see you on the other side